every morning I get to wake up around 11 a.m., go into my home Ooh. office where I spend about two minutes typing in some prompts to AI, put out my hands, get fed millions of dollars for this work I do, and then close my computer and go on with my day. This is the life of a prompt engineer. What exactly is a prompt engineer? Why does it pay so much? And is it worth actually learning to become one? Or is this a job that in a few years will fizzle out? These are all questions we're going to be answering in today's video. We keep hearing and seeing on the news or in job postings about these high paying roles called prompt engineers. And of course, this has become a recent hype with AI becoming about, and there's really two main camps or parties, if you will. One team being like, prompt engineer is not a real job. And the other team being like, this is the way we are moving to, this is in demand. I mean, some companies are paying over 300,000 US for this role for a reason. All right, let's explore this role, answer some questions around it, and well, get into it. Now, I think to start with, prompt engineer gets kind of a bad reputation because we oversimplify the role. We think, oh, prompt engineer, my grandma can do that. All I need to do is put in a prompt and the AI will give me results. In reality though, what a prompt engineer does is much more complex than just that. Prompt engineer is a professional who, yes, works with generative AI models such as, you know, ChatGPT, GPT-4, and others. Now, these models have gone through what is called reinforcement learning from human feedback, which is how we are able to, quote unquote, speak to them, but more technically speaking, give them prompts and they give us what sounds like a human response. However, these systems are not perfect by any means. They are still in their early stages. A lot of times they have trouble understanding a prompt or a query, and then also to giving a proper response. Prompt engineer's role comes in at this point where they come up with ways to make the AI system produce a proper response. One common technique that is used by prompt engineers is called chain of thoughts prompting, which involves breaking down a query into sub queries. And some people in the industry, the industry term, that sounds so tech bro -y, but some people in the industry also call this prompt engineering on steroids. So I think this is a good point to do a real world example. Let's do an example of, let's say healthcare. A prompt engineer who is hired by a healthcare company or a tech company that is managing some healthcare technologies will might be employed to refine the request that is made of generative AI in order to help doctors generate more notes more efficiently with less error. Errors. So they're essentially going in and working with the AI and making sure that the responses the AI is giving is more accurate based on whatever prompt the doctor puts in. It doesn't have to be as specific or structured in a certain way. So what skills are really required to become a prompt engineer? Can anyone become one? And I think this is why so many people are really hating or disliking on this prompt engineering role is because it feels like it's so easily accessible. I know a lot of individuals who are engineers are upset of why are these people getting these titles of engineer when they're not an engineer? That's you know, a personal preference, I guess, or is it? I don't know. Anyway, that's a whole other topic. We're not gonna go there. But at the end of the day, there are some really interesting skills that are required to become a prompt engineer. It's not something that anyone can just walk up and get a job just like that, paying $300,000 plus. There is a lot of skills that are required for this job. And the credentials are really vary based on what company you are looking to apply for this role at. As I mentioned earlier in this video, for people who are looking to get into a specific industry, so whether it be healthcare, whether it be uh, fashion, beauty, you will have to have a background in that expertise as to what you are applying. As we know, tech touches every single industry now. These roles with AI will affect every industry. So the first thing is if you are applying for a specific type of uh, prompt engineer that works for a specific area, as I just mentioned, you will also need to be to some degree an expert in that field because you are creating prompts, working with the AI, to ensure that it is accurate. And in order to do that, you need to have knowledge of the subjects you are teaching it. Other skills that might be required on some job postings and on others I'm seeing are not, but really important to have in my opinion. Having a background in coding and machine learning might not be required on all job postings, but definitely is very important and will help you succeed in this role. Having a background with coding knowledge can become really helpful when you are creating systematic evaluations of prompts and working with coding tasks. 
Now, as far as machine learning goes, this is very helpful as well, and in some cases necessary, in order to really understand the overall strengths and weaknesses of AI models. Now, despite these technical skills, it's not required of a prompt engineer. You're not going to be sitting there typically coding, uh, but having this knowledge, this background will help you substantially. Also too, of course, logical thinking, reasonable skills can be crucial for understanding how the AI will act. These are skills that are really important. And when it comes to logical thinking, this is a skill that you often pick up with coding skills. So although it's not required to have a background in coding, if you do, I think you will find this role a lot easier. And on that note, I think you will be able to negotiate a higher salary because of that past experience. I don't understand, why do they get paid so much? Great question, let me explain. Prompt engineer, actually, before we even get into that, let's clear something up here. Prompt engineer does not always pay a ton of money. We see these articles talking about it paying so well, and there are use cases, which I will get to, that do pay well. But also too, there are times where prompt engineering roles right now are not that high paying, relatively speaking. Uh, there's a really big range in those roles. Now, what if I told you being a prompt engineer had the potential, in some cases, to save people's lives? Let me explain. I found this article here that was sharing a story about a graduate research fellow who was working in the Innovation and Digital Health Accelerator in Boston's Children's Health Hospital. And he is part, and this individual named Benjamin is part of a team that is hiring for prompt engineers. And they are hiring to have someone who can come in and work with generative AI to help doctors generate notes faster. He explains he needs someone who can help us refine the ass of the generative AI. So the information we're spitting out is limited in hallucinations, and each of these tasks, he goes on to say, is going to be really niche, very specific. Their internal system isn't trained on Wikipedia and Reddit, but instead, by sensitive notes about diagnosis, patient billing information, and comments between medical professionals about a given patient in an extremely specific context. See how this role can all of a sudden become very important, very... Uh, intentional, very meaningful when you start putting people's lives on it and thinking about it in the realm of healthcare. Now, this is one example of a very high paying prompt engineering role. And let's go into something more that's a little bit more generic because as we've seen as well, that can still be very high paying. Even with OpenAI's job posting around a prompt engineer, it was more generic. It focused more on the technical side of things, the technical knowledge that you should possess or have experienced. So there is the flip side to both. Having that knowledge is really what is key and being someone who is very logical and a critical thinker. Now I've seen job postings going from 40,000 US to 350,000 US for compensation. So this definitely does range. And I think that example of healthcare is such a great one to really highlight how this job is legit and it's needed in a lot of fields for specific cases. So are these jobs going to be around in the future or are they here one day and gone the next? This is another question that a lot of people, including myself, have really been digging into to try and understand because on one hand it seems like this in so many cases is here to stay, it's really needed, but on the other, the way AI is going, it makes you really wonder, will AI just get to a point where it doesn't have a prompt engineer anymore, that it's just its own prompt engineer? Well, let's go back to that story of the individual who was working at the children's hospital. He actually goes on to quote that having a trained person interacting with AI is going to be important for a really long time. That might not be the case for all fields, but certainly for a healthcare system. And I think this is a really great example of how this role will be needed in many different industries, very specific use cases, but it might not be the generic or as common of a job as we keep on hearing about today. In any case though, I don't think that's a reason to not explore this role if you are interested in it. As we've seen with every job, especially with AI and the way it is going, it's continuing to evolve. This isn't something new. And if you are interested in prompt engineering and maybe starting out with a very lucrative potential of a job, why not go for it? The skills you will build through that, the networks, the connections you will build through that, you can continue to build upon. Whether you are, if you are basing your decisions right now on will Will this job be around in the next five or 10 years? I don't think you're asking the right questions. It's more so, will I want to continue to learn and grow with tech as it does as well? Because that doesn't just affect prompt engineering roles, it affects all roles. All right, I hope you enjoyed this video going through what exactly is a prompt engineer, how to become one, and why does it pay 
so much. Leave in the comments though, are you interested in this role? Do you think this role is legit? Do you think it's a joke or how do you feel about it? I'm really curious to hear your comments and as always, I'll do my absolute best to respond to every single one. If you haven't already, make sure to hit that subscribe button if you really enjoyed these type of videos. Leave down in the comments other topics you want me to cover. That's how I make these videos, is for you. All right, I'll see you all soon. Thanks everyone.